on the TOEIC listening section, there are four parts, totaling 45 minutes on the test. In our first video, we will be looking at part one, which is called the photograph section. There will be 10 questions that appear on the TOEIC test. Now, we will be using the download that TOEIC uh, ETS has provided for us and looking at a few sample questions to decide uh, to determine how to answer these questions. Now, before we begin, let's kind of take a moment just to review the general test strategy that we discussed in the TOEIC reading series. So, we discussed the idea of the process of elimination, or POE. POE is a systematic way to answer questions on the test. Now, first off, we have to remember that no guessing strategy is 100% uh, true all of the time. It's never going to produce for us uh, every time we take the test. But process of elimination will improve your chances. But, as you recall, in order to eliminate an answer choice, you must be able to understand it as well. So remember, don't eliminate an answer choice first if you don't understand it. Now, since it is not our purpose in this video series to review the process of elimination or to provide the general overview for the test, I would recommend going back and looking at video one of the TOEIC reading series. And the link to that is uh, in, the, in the information section below this video. So, now let's look at the TOEIC download information that's provided for us. And uh, once again, you'll see the link to that as well in the uh, in information below. First off, let's take a look at um, how the particular question will be introduced to us on the test. So first off, you will notice that on, um, in the directions, it will describe the fact that there are four statements that you will hear about the picture in the book. When you hear the statements, you must select the one statement that best describes what you see in the picture. Then you need to find the number of the question on your answer sheet and mark your answer. Now, the, diff the, the, the real challenge here is in this next statement. Uh, the fact is the statements themselves are not printed in the test book, and you'll hear them only once. So again, what you will see on the test form itself are basically just four letters, A, B, C, and D, and the picture. So this can be our first sort of challenge when we're taking this part of the test, is that we don't actually get to see the statements that they're reading to us. We actually just listen to them once. Now, in order for us to begin to prepare for the uh, photograph section, it'd probably be helpful to think about what a photograph is actually showing us. So let's take a moment to think about what, what do we actually see in the picture? What do you think might actually be the focus of the photo? which ideas or items uh, seem to be important, and maybe which ones are not. Now, of course, we don't ultimately know this information until we hear the actual statements. But, you know, for example, it may not necessarily be important to know that there is probably a window over here on this side of the screen, or that perhaps this guy is wearing a tie. But we do notice there are a few things that kind of stand out. For example, uh, how many people are involved in the picture, the things that we see on the table. Let's take a look at this a little more carefully. So again, we see people standing around a table and they appear to be talking. Now think about for a moment what kind of people are they? Could they be professors? Could this be uh, a business seminar? Obviously the TOEIC is involved with business related topics. So again, it's possible that they were at a meeting. Is this before or after the meeting? Well, we really don't know, but we can at least make some reasonable guesses uh, before we actually begin to hear the information. Now, notice, of course, there are other objects in the room, too. And uh, we have to think about, for example, what are these two things called? Well, uh, first off, this uh, particular item here is referred to as a podium. And this particular item here is referred to as an overhead projector. It's very possible that these two items might be referenced by name in the answer choices that we have to listen to. Now, thinking about the action of the picture, what do we think is happening, or perhaps has happened here? Do we even have enough information to guess? And can we think about why these people are here? Again, these are a lot of questions that we might want to think about when we're looking at the picture. But uh, we will notice as we actually get to the listening portion, it might actually be somewhat tricky to think about uh, this information. So, 
again, we really don't know much until we actually hear the statement. So now let's listen to the four answer choices. A. They're leaving the room. B. They're turning on the machine. C. They're standing near the table. D. They're reading the newspaper. Okay, now, uh, of course, this next part is something that you will not see on the TOEIC, but let's take for the moment and analyze the choices as they're provided to us in the booklet. A. They're leaving the room. B. They're turning on the machine. C. They're standing near the table. D. They're reading the newspaper. Now this brings us to our first sort of TOEIC hint. And this is thinking about what a photo can include and what can we actually prove when we look at a, when we look at a photo. And this is where we see uh, some differences from the listening section to the reading section. So, what can we prove? Well, the photograph section in general is usually about what we can directly identify and prove given the visual information uh, that we have here. Now, you could make many guesses about what's happening or has just happened, but since the TOEIC is a test that we would consider to be reliable and valid, the answer choice has to be something that we can directly identify. So, for example, it would be probably pretty difficult for us to think about what is happening or just happened. Like, for example, did they go to a meeting? Because there could be too many different interpretations. So the idea here is we have to be able to see something directly in the actual photo. That's what the test is going to talk about. Now, as we go through each answer choice, let's see if we can kind of think about what are the particular tricks uh, that are involved in trying to uh, eliminate the, you know, the incorrect answers. Now, let's look at A. They're leaving the room. Now, this idea might be possible because it looks like that perhaps this meeting or presentation is finished. So, again, notice the projector has uh, been turned off. But it also could be that the speaker hasn't even begun yet. This could actually be before the meeting. So again, this might be possible, but this is probably one that we might eliminate a little bit later. But let's keep it for just a moment. Now for B, uh, this one is definitely going to be one we can eliminate. Uh, first off, you notice the word machine is being used here. And, and the first thing we need to realize is that that's a pretty general word. So and most likely, they would never use something that general on the test. So this is one that we can see pretty much we can eliminate. Okay, the next one. Well, we do notice that this is something we can prove from the photo. All of them do seem to be fairly close to the table that's included in the photo. So in this case, we think this one's possible. Let's keep it. And the last one, they're reading the newspaper. Well, let's think about the, the potential trick that's included here. If you look on the table for a moment, there does seem to be something that you would read. But again, this is uh, most likely an agenda or a prospectus or notes from a presentation, something that was def would definitely not be a newspaper. So in this case, we can eliminate this one as well. So you might recall that on uh, in the previous video series when we discussed the process of elimination, we generally would have two choices to think about. So in this case, between A and C, which one do we think most directly describes something we can prove from the video, uh, from the photo? Well, I think we can see at this point we can't prove that they're leaving the room. We don't know if this is before or after the meeting. So in this case, our best choice is probably going to be C. They're standing near the table. And that one is the correct answer. Now, we uh, probably should go ahead and discuss an important strategic point here for the TOEIC. Uh, the first challenge you will notice is on the listening section, there is no note taking. And this is uh, definitely unfortunate, and it certainly puts you at a disadvantage when it comes to remembering the information you hear on the test. Now, keep on the TOEIC itself, you're not allowed to write anywhere in the test booklet, and you're not allowed to take notes on a separate sheet of paper. And in fact, these are forbidden by ETS and the TOEIC, and you most likely will be removed from the test center if you were caught writing these things down. So the question is, what can you do? 
Well, the again, the first uh, difficulty uh, after not being able to take notes is the fact that nothing is repeated. So hopefully the answer would be apparent to you. So one strategy I recommend is as you are listening, take your pencil and actually place your pencil on each of the answer choices as you listen to them. And then as you are listening, think about the one or two choices you might think are possible. Then completely fill in the circle that you think is correct. So this kind of way helps you to focus your attention while you're listening. Another strategy, which you might find even more helpful, is to actually repeat the answer choices out loud. Now, of course, what I mean out loud, I mean softly to yourself, uh, in the exact order that you hear them. Because really, this part of the test, if you think about it, is actually testing your memory and your ability to perceive information quickly at the same time. So I might recommend that this might be a better strategy because it helps keep the information fresh as you're repeating it. Now we're going to demonstrate this with another question that's provided to us in the sample booklet. So first off, again, let's examine the photo. First off, think about what we can see in the picture, and then think about the strategies we've just discussed. So in just a moment when you listen to the answer choices, try to repeat the answer choices in the order that you hear them. Now let's listen. A. He's checking his watch. B. He's wearing a jacket. C. He's adjusting his tie. D. He's folding his clothes. Now before we actually analyze the answers, it's a perfect time to think about the tricks that the test is trying to use. So uh, in this case, when we say trick photography, obviously we're not referring to special effects. But what we're thinking about is how can we trick students uh, with this section of the test? Well, one of the easiest ways to do this would actually be to include some information in each uh, distractor that actually is correct. So the key is when we focus on all of the answer choices. Uh, remember, we won't really know what we're going to be focusing on until we actually hear the question. So when you think about it, oftentimes the information that's being asked may actually not be something you think is important, but really is just something that's fairly simple. So again, this might get you into trouble if you try to think too much about the picture. But it is important to understand that the question will be asking something that you can directly identify or prove. Now listen again to the four answer choices. A. He's checking his watch. B. He's wearing a jacket. C. He's adjusting his tie. D. He's folding his clothes. So, in this case, the answer is B. Now, let's analyze the choices. First off, notice that in each one, there actually is some information that is uh, included in the picture. Uh, for example, we do see a watch. We do see the person's wearing a jacket. There is a tie. And when we think about folding, especially this last one, we do notice that he's folding something, but is it his clothes? Well, we'll see in just a moment what the trick is. So again, notice that in each distractor, there is something that's correct. So uh, he is wearing a watch, but the key is whether he is checking it. So oftentimes the trick is not necessarily focusing on the last word of the sentence. It's really thinking about the middle words of the sentence. So you can notice that oftentimes these are the words that we often miss because uh, oftentimes when people are speaking quickly, we usually hear the first word of the sentence and maybe the last word very clearly. But sometimes the middle can be kind of confusing. Okay, let's try one more. Now, look before we even listen, Let's think about what can we actually prove directly with this picture. What are things that we can actually observe and uh, identify just from looking at the photo? And again, be careful, it might be something simple that you weren't paying attention to. 
For example, we notice that the person here is wearing an earring. Now, you may not think that's important, but remember on the TOEIC, they're not necessarily looking for important information. They're looking only for something that you can prove. Uh, she does seem to be looking into some sort of device, but we can't necessarily say, is she a scientist? We don't really know that. But we can prove the fact that she's looking into this particular uh, apparatus here. And uh, the reason I'm not mentioning it by name is because this might be a trick that we'll see in just a moment. But now that we're getting ready, let's listen to the four choices. A. She's speaking into a microphone. B. She's putting on her glasses. C. She's studying from a book. D. She's using a microscope. So, this brings us to our final TOEIC trick of the video. And that is the fact that oftentimes answer choices may also have similar sounding words. So, in this particular example, you notice that we had two words that had very similar uh, sounds, especially because they had similar prefixes. Microphone and microscope. So, you can notice that the first parts of these, micro, are exactly the same. Now, of course, they both can't be the same word. So, the key, of course, is could you catch that information uh, because we only had the chance to listen to it once. So again, this is a fairly common uh, trick on this section of the test, mostly because there are limited ways for the test to confuse you on this section. So again, uh, the idea here is with similar sounding words, you have to be able to catch this information quickly, because remember, the information is not repeated. So listen again. A. She's speaking into a microphone. B. She's putting on her glasses. C. She's studying from a book. D. She's using a microscope. So, which one is the answer choice? Well, if you said D, you're correct. And again, notice that part of the idea was focusing on the key word of microscope, which is the idea that we can clearly see here in the picture. So, our final thoughts. The photograph section involves an ability to recognize what you can prove, not necessarily what we can guess, infer, or predict. The TOEIC, of course, uh, as we mentioned before, does not allow note-taking. So other memory or test-taking strategies are going to be necessary because information is not repeated. So think about what we discussed earlier in the video about repeating the answer choices to yourself and positioning your pencil over the answer choices to kind of focus your attention while you're listening. The most common tricks we found on the test in this section are Answer choices that focus on making a guess, an inference, rather than what we can directly prove. Answer choices that have some correct information in them, but distract from what is actually true about the picture. And then finally, answer choices that have similar sounds, or have words with similar prefixes and or suffixes. Now, there are lots of great materials out there to help you prepare for the TOEIC. Of course, there's the official TOEIC website, as uh, put together by ETS. Uh, we also have the uh, Tactics for TOEIC textbook series. Uh, again, we mentioned this in the previous video series, that this is the only textbook series that ETS has actually worked with uh, an actual press, in this case Oxford, to put together prep materials. So I would highly recommend both of these if you're studying for the listening and reading tests and the speaking and writing test. And of course we also have a new TOEFL and TOEIC preparation website and the link of which can be found at the bottom of this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for video two, listening part two.